Welcome to another episode of Tube Test. I'm Johnny. And I'm Natalie. And today, this is kind of the cool show of the NAM wrap up. And there were a lot of great microphones. Is she crying? Yep, she's crying. <laughs> yeah, apparently she wants to be in the video too. Yeah, I think so. Hold on. So welcome to another episode of Tube Test. I'm Johnny. And I'm Natalie. And this is... AV. Yep, it's been nine months. Is that crazy? I know, can you believe she's nine months old? That just seems... <laughs> I mean, it is, it really is crazy. She's excited today to be on to be on Tube Test, aren't you? Say hi. That was, that was her grandma. Did you hear Sherry? Sherry's walking out now. Oh, God. <laughs> Grandma's the baby wrangler. Well, here, here. You could take her for a second. Because if she does the whole show, she might get a little bit uh, antsy. antsy. Yeah, there you go. And this is basically the NAM wrap up show. But a few. NAM 2014, we should point out. That for is those true. of you who are watching in the future. Oh my gosh, you are so funny. Well, we should put on a few things. This is actually the last episode on this channel. We're going to our new channel, which is Modern Bikes. Bum, ba, da, bum. Yep, so for some of you guys who don't want to wait for the tube test episodes, you can actually check out the mic testing right away. Yep, check it out, Modern Mics. Let's talk about the NAM 2014. This one, Natalie, I was actually pretty excited about. Really? Well, I didn't get to go because I was taking care of our baby, A.V. She's nine months old now. Can you believe it? Oh my gosh, where does time go? Oh. Mm, well, time is gone, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> well, I'm excited because a lot of these microphone companies were actually pushing forward with their innovation, mm -hmm. and I'm pretty excited to tell you about all of them. Wow, I'm excited. I have seen a little preview of some of his footage, and I've been able to um, check out some of the microphones and I have to say I'm pretty impressed. Well I will say this there are a few microphone companies that I didn't even know existed and they were showing at NAM. Hmm. and there are some well without further ado let me get my cheat sheet. Okay. Ba -ba -bum. Okay so first of all we checked out the Sheps 4VU microphone. Okay. Now everybody knows the brand Sheps and they've been making microphones for you know, professionals for many, many years. So the Sheps 4VU, there's actually a video up on um, up on Modern Mics right now, but um, it is a pretty cool microphone, and Dan hey. Franklin actually got to sing into it. Hmm. So check out that video. Another one is the AEA, which is of course Wes Dooley. He came up with a microphone called the Nuvo. Hmm. So it's a ribbon microphone, because they're pretty much known for ribbons. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, I was impressed because it's a ribbon for under a thousand dollars. Really? Yeah, and it's pretty cool, Natalie. It sounds very warm like ribbons do. Mm -hmm. So check out that video as well. Blue. They, okay. they came out with a microphone that's gonna be a small diaphragm little pencil microphone. Hmm. But what's cool about that is they haven't really done one like this. This is a new microphone that is called the Hampton, and that's the code name is the Hampton. Ooh, code name, huh? Yeah, they really don't even have a name for it yet. <laughs> okay, so I was walking through NAM and I came across this microphone, or I was passing the booth rather, uh -huh. and I was like, what is that? So apparently there's a new company called Soy Use. Is it two words or one? Well, it's S-O-Y-U-Z. As one word? Yes. Okay, Soy Use. Okay, can you guess where that's from? Uh, an Asian country? Whoa! <laughs> Anyways, it's actually a Russian mic manufacturer. Oh, Russian. But I will tell you this, it reminds me a lot of the Octava mics. But oh. if I were to um, give my best judgment, it's actually the Rolls Royce of Russian microphones. Really? Rolls Royce, huh? Yeah, it's got this really cool gold color, which is probably, uh, you know, shiny brass. Mm -hmm. um, the weight on it is great, and the tolerance is, well, watch the video, it's on modern mics. Okay. Okay, so now to the exciting ones that kind of like took the cake for me. Okay. okay. Now I literally say took the cake because I took the microphones home with me. <laughs> So, I don't know if I've ever said this before, but if you hear a microphone that sounds great... Take it. Yeah. 
Yeah. And not in the stealing sort of way, no, 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 but no. just do everything in your power to not let it leave your hands. Yeah. Buy the thing, you know, like pay on Bitcoin <laughs> or whatever you got to do. But uh, here are the ones that topped the charts for me. So okay. first of all, I actually have one here. It's the JZJ1. The JZJ1. Now, why do we like this right out of the gate? Okay, well, it's gray. I like the fact that it's silver. I mean, a lot of times you're performing with a black backdrop or dark, and this one you could just see, it pops. But that's not totally why. Come on. What? The J. Come on, Johnny. What, if it was the N1, you would, you would love it just as much. Yeah, no. Okay, well, all kidding aside, we tested this mic out. Um, it's on Modern Mics as well, and I will tell you it is in the Jay-Z vein. Now, this is a European microphone for $399. Really? So it's under $400 by $1. <laughs> yeah, good math on that one. But, uh, you know... That's a, that's a nice microphone for a cheap price. Cheap? No, 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 no. Affordable. Oh, excuse me. Affordable price. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to get people... You know, because then they think that thing's no, going to fall understand. apart and get... No, I understand. I understand. It's actually not, though. Um, you have, it does have, it's very, very well made. Yeah, so it's a European microphone for $399, but following into the Jay-Z uh, steps, it's a microphone that isn't bright and brittle. You sing into it and it's very reminiscent of a ribbon microphone. Mm. So the reason why I say that is because somebody posted up on the YouTube channel Modern Mics, you like how I keep saying that? Someone? Yeah, <laughs> anyways. Someone who will, will remain nameless. <laughs> no, but they're up there and they say, you know, it really, uh, you know, sounds like a ribbon. You know, hmm. they didn't say that exactly. I'm kind of taking it out of context. But anyways, so check it out. There's a video up on Modern Mics. The okay, J1 so that's microphone. the J1. Okay, Jay-Z did not just come out with one product this NAM 2014. They came out with two other project products. Projects yeah, that became on. products. I'm not gonna edit that, it's too much work. <laughs> so, two other products. One is the HH1, which is a handheld microphone. Natalie, I am super stoked about this microphone. I know, you posted a video saying you were excited about it. Yeah, I got actually to use the microphone all ma'am as um, the, hey. Do we have one here? I tried. <laughs> I wanna try it. I know, it, it's a microphone that doesn't sound like a SM57. It doesn't sound like the standard dynamic microphone. Hmm. It's a microphone that I personally feel, right now it's called the handheld one, HH1, right? Uh -huh. And a lot of people, or Jay-Z is kind of marketing it as a, you know, vocal microphone. Okay. I think though, the way that I was hearing it, or what I was hearing when I was using it, mm -hmm. I'm like, man, these guys are gonna use it or people that are gonna buy it are gonna put it in front of guitar cabinets. It's a microphone that's very clear. Dynamics usually aren't known for being clear, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. Um, I was excited that the mesh pattern on the HH1 is doing this cross thing. You know, I, I, and I gotta show it and I gotta get it and I gotta show you guys. But anyways, pretty excited about that. Video's already up, um, you could check that out. Anyways, the most controversial, yep, the most, most controversial. And I say this because, you know, I sat down in, in Los Angeles and I was discussing a bunch of these uh, finds at NAMM with Dusk Bennett in his Los Angeles studio. And he had his own opinions on this and I'll actually run that for you. Okay. But here's what it is. It's the Slate Virtual Microphones, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a software and hardware combination okay. where he's taking the best microphones of our time, you know, the vintage microphones, and um, mixing it with a hardware microphone, uh -huh. you know, software combination. So it actually, you can sing into the Slate microphone and uh, use the software and it changes it to... So it's like a, a mic modeler? What do they call that? It's a mic modeler. Huh. Okay, so here's where it gets weird. Antares... But does it sound like fakey? You know what I mean? <sighs> I understand what you're saying, okay? And this is where it gets weird. Antares came out with something like this, you know, many years ago. Okay. I remember in the late 90s when I actually bought, a lot of guys bought the software. I bought the hardware because mm. I like having it in my hands. Mm -hmm. So it was the mic modeler. So I got the mic modeler by Antares and um, I... Dan Franklin still uses it, for example, and we were talking about this mm. at the show. I said, so what do you think about, you know, your mic modeler? And he's like, I, I use it. It's a, it's, a, it's a tool, it's a sound, okay? Mm -hmm. So with any new product, 
especially a software product where it's trying to go up against some of our beloved microphones. Right. Um, at first I was a little fearful and I was like, you know, wow, this is like, you know, there's no way that they're gonna be able to- Create this out. Yeah, okay. After I started thinking about it, I said, hey, my hat is off, literally right now, to <laughs> Steven Slate, because he's trying to do something progressive, trying to push it into the future, trying to you know do this mic modeling that other companies have done with guitar modeling and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, it's like a mic synthesizer in a sense. Well, you can call it that, but <laughs> I wouldn't. Um, so no, it's actually kind of cool. And I think we get uh, a little bit caught up in the fact that, you know, when MIDI first came out and when samples first came out, there's no way it's not gonna sound right. as good as mm -hmm. the real thing. It's a little bit of fear. I see it as it's a tool. I don't think it's necessarily a replacement. I see it as another tool. Mm -hmm, yeah. So hats off to that. That's my perspective. But here's a little bit of what Dusk had to say. I'm skeptical not because, in fact, if anyone could afford to um, to um, be a skeptic or not be a skeptic for that matter, it's me because I don't have a horse in the, I guess you say a horse in the race, a dog mm -hmm. in the game. How's that expression go? I got nothing to gain or lose by what Stephen Slade does. Uh, I like what he's doing with some of his other tools. And I know a lot of guys that I uh, respect that enjoy those tools as well. The thing that kind of left a bad taste in my mouth is that it was being represented as if it was the real thing. And I'm standing in the same same speaker image that everyone else was, probably closer to it, and realizing this is not the same. And... Um, they, some something must be wrong. Yeah, that was what I thought. Well, I think it's definitely going to ruffle <coughs> feathers. I think it's definitely going <clears> to <throat> ruffle my feathers. And you know, whatever. I mean, really, it's what needs to happen. Is it? It needs. It needs to be given the fair trial and error that any other piece of studio equipment is. Time will either prove it to be valuable, and people will catch on to it and realize, hey, you know what? It's good enough for what we're doing. Or very quickly, the thing will be proven to be uh, just another way to take money from unsuspecting people, and they'll oh learn gosh. very quickly that it's not what it says it is. Oh, geez. And I'm not <laughs> suggesting that this is the case. Please don't misinterpret <laughs> me. I'm just being very clear that it can go either way. Uh, and <clears throat> I'm I'm more um, I'm more open, and it's not like Stephen Slade cares what I think, so it's fine. He'll do his thing, and I wish him well. He's awesome, and he gives you his opinion. Yes, he okay? does. But... We like that. No sugar coating, you know? No sugar coating. <laughs> I will say this, though. I brought one of the favorite... La I saved it for last. Okay. okay. Finds at Nam. Now, I am totally bias because I love this company. I love what they're doing, uh, along with all these other guys that I've talked about. Cathedral Pipes. Oh, good old Cathedral Pipes. They came out with a FET microphone called the Saint Jean Baptiste. Jean Baptiste. Now here's the thing, I had run around the NAM floor trying out all these microphones, brought my headphones, sang into it, that whole thing, mm. and I sang into this one and I was just like, this is awesome. It's like a Valentine's Day mic. I don't know, I just really like the <laughs> yeah. red and silver. Well, you know, I like the fact that it's- It's uh, really cool the way they did that. Well, it's not paint. It's actually yeah. sprayed on and it's baked on, okay? It's a whole process that they do. But it's cool because they went with the whole checkered thing. But let's not it talk- It feels good too. Basically, a FET 47 with an M7 capsule, okay. uh, the circuitry that Cathedral Pipe spares no expense with, mm -hmm. and uh, the NAM pricing was under a thousand dollars. Really? Yeah, yeah. Wow. So I will say this, I would quickly buy this thing because- Okay, I'll see you later. <laughs> well, no, I told Chuck, I'm like, I'm buying this thing, man. This thing sounds awesome. Um, I will say, get it while you can yeah. because um, it's a microphone that the price, I think, you know, at NAMM it's is fantastic one fantastic price. Yeah, I think it's gonna go up. So, I don't know. There's a link actually below on this uh, video. You guys should check that out. Okay, so last year I did this thing of microphones that aren't at NAMM. Okay. Well, I didn't really get to do that like this year. You know, because I wasn't finding too many microphones that aren't at NAM, though there are some that are out there until I got home and I got a microphone in the mail from Germany. Yeah. 
Okay, so you know what I'm already talking about, don't I you? I do. That's why I'm already smiling. Okay, so here it is. If you guys have not heard about this microphone, then you've got to check it out. It's a microphone company called Urton Microphones. Urton. Yeah. Now you may Can have- Can you spell it? U-R-T-O-N. Urton, okay. Yeah. Now you may have heard about this microphone company. You may not have. They were formerly known as Horch microphones. Horch, okay. Yeah, now, and they were starting to make, you know, kind of a, um, a name for themselves, but then they had to change their name, and it is now Urton Microphones. Hmm. So, I don't want to describe it too much, but it really is kind of the Bugatti of microphones. It's basically where Neumann stopped, but Urton kept going. Okay, so Bugatti is a car? Yeah. I like I like you. You're like, oh my gosh, really? Really? <laughs> really? Do you know do you know what a Ferrari is? Jeez. You're too funny. Uh... Okay, so here it is, you guys. There's a video that's already up on uh, modern mics. And describe it a little bit to the guys out there because you know you've got it in your hand in the field. Well, it was so funny is when I look at it, I was like, oh the body is black. I've already sang into it. I don't even know. I, I don't know why I didn't know that the body was black. But um, one thing I like is there's a little itty bitty diamond right there. <laughs> I'm gonna keep this microphone and turn it into jewelry. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, she actually brought up a good point. You know, Neumann when they made the M49, you know, they put that jewel on it. Well, Urton kind of took it forward. And there's two modes to this microphone. There's the red mode and the blue mode. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, without getting into it, because we're going to do a tube test episode on this, it's basically uh, changes its proximity. So we're talking like one mode sounds like you're super up close. The other mode sounds like you're a little bit farther back, you know, kind of dropping it into the mix. The build quality on this thing, it, it's, it's awesome. It really is fantastic. It's very reminiscent of, you know, microphones like a 47, but it didn't stop there. You know, it went further. The head grill is actually thicker. Um, it's re it's a really neat head grill. Like we'll show some close up pictures, but I don't even think you can, you can understand what it really looks like until you hold it in your hands. Yeah. It's a, just a thicker mesh, but then they compensate by um, making it thinner and, you know, being able, you know, underneath the second layer. So anyways, check this out at uh, urtonmicrophones.com. Also, um, check out the videos on modern mics. So next time on Tube Test, I'm excited to say that not just microphones caught my eye at NAMM 2014. Really? Mm. There's one specific product that I just kind of went gaga over. Okay. You know, and the fact that I was a little over caffeinated in most of my videos, <laughs> almost all of them. But uh, all kidding aside, it's the new WA76 by Warm Audio. Oh, really? Yeah. So, what that is, is basically, I don't want to give you guys too much, but I had to snag it. Really? Yep. So, we're going to test this out. It's basically an 1176 for $599. $599. Yeah. I know it's sounding like an infomercial, but we'll check it out <laughs> next time on, on Tube Tests. Test. Flip it around. <laughs>